Hi! In this video we're going to look at another surface integral example, this time using a parametrized surface. So you might notice that this problem is almost the same as the problem from the last video. We've got a temperature function that gives the temperature at any point x, y, z. It's the same temperature function we had in the last video. And we're supposed to find the average temperature on some surface. So this surface also is not given in parametric form, but we'll talk a little bit about why that would be useful for this particular problem. Okay, so we need to find average temperature. We talked in the last video about the idea that the average value of the function is going to be the integral of the function over the region that you want to find the average value on divided by the size of the region. So in this case, surface area. Okay, so we're going to set that up. That We need to think a little bit about the region that we are integrating over. So I'm going to sketch a little picture of the surface. And we talked about in the last video how you need to be careful about all these equations that you're clear about which of these equations actually define the surface. So our surface here is this portion of this cylinder. Notice this is the same cylinder that showed up in our last video. But in that last video, the surface was not the cylinder. It was the portion of the plane that lies inside that cylinder. This one, we're looking at the average temperature on the cylinder that lies between two planes. So let's do a little sketch over here of our surface. So we've got this cylinder of radius 2 centered at the origin. And we're interested in the part that is between the planes z equals 0 and z equals 9. So it's the surface of this cylinder that wraps all the way around. All right, so the issue here is that there is no coordinate plane where I have a one-to-one -one projection of this surface. If you project this surface down into the xy plane, you would just end up with the circle, not the points inside the circle, but the circle of radius 2 down in the xy plane. And every single point that lies above that circle would end up projected down to that same point. So that would be an infinity to 1 projection down into the xy plane. If you try to project into either the yz plane or the xz plane, you end up with this rectangle region where the cylinder would project back. You just think about collapsing that cylinder back into the, in this case I drew the one in the yz plane, it would be that rectangle. But that would be a 2 to 1 projection. So you'd have a point on the front side of the cylinder and a point on the back side of the cylinder that would map to the same point in that rectangle in the yz plane. So one of the issues here is that there is no place where I have a 1 to 1 projection of this surface into one of the coordinate planes. So I have some choices about how I might do this surface integral. I could split the surface in half. So I could say do the front half, the part that's in front of the yz plane, and use the one-to-one -one projection that I get for that, integrate over that surface, and then do the same thing over the back surface because of some symmetry with the function that you're integrating over here. You might be able to use some properties of symmetry to do that. So you could do that. You could also use a strategy that our textbook uses for implicitly defined surfaces. But really, a parameterization of this surface is the simplest way to do this problem. So let's do the parameterization of this cylinder. So remember, when you do your parameterization, you're going to have three functions, x, y, z, as functions of u and v. And because of the circles in the xy direction, you might think about using polar coordinates, x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. But remember that the r is fixed. We looked at this in some previous videos here. In this case, the r is not changing. The r is fixed at that radius of that cylinder, which is 2. And then instead of theta, I will use either u or v here. So I'm just going to use u. And we'll let u go from 0 to 2 pi. And then z needs to just go all the way up and down here. So I'm going to let z be v. And v go from 0 to 9. And so that gives me parameterizations, x, y, z equations. Or we might also want to write those in that vector form, r of u, v. This is a 1 to 1 projection from this rectangle in the uv plane. If I draw that in the uv plane, we did that when we did substitutions for multiple integrals where we do regions in uv plane. If I think about every point that's in that uv plane corresponds to a unique point on this surface. So there are no two points, two uv points, that correspond to the same point on my surface. 
So I do have a one-to-one -one projection between my surface and this rectangle. All right, so this is what I'm going to end up integrating over. And when we do that surface integral using a parameterized surface, remember that when I do the integral of the temperature function for a parameterized surface, we're going to integrate over the R in the UV plane. I need my temperature function to be all in terms of U and V, so I'll substitute in place of X, Y, and Z. And then the D sigma for a parameterized surface is the magnitude of the cross product of these two partial derivatives. And then I'm going to integrate with the differential dA being in the UV plane. All right, so I need to go ahead and find these two partial derivatives. And there are some conditions. I need to make sure that I have a smooth parameterization. This one is, but how you might check that is by thinking about these partial derivatives. So let's go ahead and calculate those. R sub u, so that's the partial derivative of R with respect to u. So I'm just going to be treating v as a constant. So I'll have negative 2 sine u, 2 cosine u, and 0 and r sub v, so I'm going to differentiate with respect to v, treating u as a constant, so I'll have 0, 0, 1. These are both continuous. That's one of the conditions for a smooth parameterization. And the other condition for the smooth parameterization is that the magnitude of the cross product is not 0. And we need to calculate that magnitude of that cross product anyway for our d sigma differential. So let's go ahead and do that here. All right, so here is my cross product. I ended up with 2 cosine u comma 2 sine u comma 0. And then I need the magnitude of that cross product. And so we'll end up with square root of 4 or just 2 for the magnitude of that cross product. And so the magnitude of that cross product is not 0. So I do have a smooth parameterization. All right, so let's go ahead and set up this integral in terms of u's and v's. OK, so here I have my temperature function, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, with my equations for my surface for x, y, and z substituted in. So now my temperature function is all in terms of u's and v's. And then I have my magnitude of my cross product of those partial derivative vectors, that is my 2 that I have here, and then dA, since I'm integrating in the uv plane, I have u on the inner integral going from 0 to 2 pi, and v on the outer integral going from 0 to 9. All right, and then from there, it's just a matter of doing that integration. So we'll go through that quickly here. All right, so I got 1,116 pi. Okay, so that was just the integral for the numerator, and then I need to think about the integral I need for the denominator. So for the denominator, I need the surface area of s, which is given by this integral. But remember that our surface was just a cylinder of radius 2 and height 9, and it's just the side, just the lateral part of that cylinder. So it's pretty easy to write down the surface area for that. So the lateral surface area would be the circumference of the circle. So 2 pi times 2 times the height times 9, so 36 pi. All right, so on this one, then, to find my average temperature, I will just need to divide those two numbers. And we'll get 31 whatever the units of temperature are. All right, so practice some homework with surface integrals, both with explicit forms and parameterizations. And remember that even if the problem isn't given in one particular form or the other, sometimes it's convenient to switch.